Hey guys, what's up? Lone Berserker here. And as you can see, I am actually currently in my uh, dining room, which for this purpose, it's a lot easier to record in rather than my bedroom because I have birds and <laughs> they make a lot of noise. So it's a lot quieter downstairs in my house than it is upstairs in my room, especially when Currently, I'm actually the only one living up there, and uh, I probably make more noise when there was more of us, but <laughs> just simply because of the amount of animals I have. Now, that's besides the point. Um, I'm currently doing this video to talk about my most recent book series, which I have right next to me. Um, it's called The Black Sea Emperor Mithridates, so obviously it's about Mithridates the Great, or the Poison King, the um, infamous Poison King, who was... Famous for fighting Rome and stuff like that. So um, I decided that because I couldn't find a fictional, his historic fictional book series on Mithridates, I would actually write my own. So if you don't know, I am a writer. Um, I think I've written like nine or ten books. I can't actually remember. There's a lot on there, though. Um, <laughs> so I just write like a fanatic at this point, honestly. I just pump books out like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> so these, this, that's the third one. So here is the first one. And the reason I actually chose this cover is, I don't know if you can see it, I should hold it back here. The reason I actually cho chose this specific cover is because if you don't know, the historic land of Pontus and Asia Minor in general is very rocky and um, hilly and has a lot of mountains. And so, you know, I picked the mountainous background um, for that specific reason. And it still is like that today. It's very rocky and stuff. Um, so that's the first one. It's just called book one. Here's the second one, which I chose a comet. Um, if you don't know, Mithridates was marked by a comet for his greatness. There was actually three of them during his total reign. Um, yeah, three that I remember of. I think there was three. Um... And I called this one the point of no return. You know, you get the meaning if you know his history. Um, he had three wars with Rome. And so this was this this book takes place during the first war. I stuffed the entire war in one book, <laughs> which was just the better cho um, better thing to do, in my opinion, than separate it and put it into multiple books. That's actually why this one is so small compared to the other one. This one is a total of 102 pages. This one I think is 152, so 50 more pages than that one. And this is the final one, um, which I call the final Mithridated, um, which was their dynasty name. Uh, so I chose that background cover to sort of, for one, I kind of ran an idea. I'm terrible when it comes to making book covers, guys, if you haven't noticed. Um, but I chose that one to try and get the landscape of Lower Pontus, I guess you could say, because that's where most of this war took place. And this one is kind of small. It's um, 120 pages. So that's the uh, final one. And this, I'm kind of proud of this work. I did it, I think I've got to say that I wrote these three specific books in under two months, um, which... You know, for some people, it can take a month to write half of a book. So for me to have accomplished three in under two months, I think that's pretty good. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's how quickly I wrote them. And I edit them as fast as I write them. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just fast when it comes to doing stuff like this. I don't take my time at all. I just, I do it. And I do it because I enjoy it. So, um... So the first book, I guess I can go through and specifically each one. So the first book um, talks about Mithridates' birth and then goes on to when his generals take over the entire Black Sea and prepares uh, to go to war with Rome. I actually included it at the end here. Uh, where is this? I think it's at the end here. Somewhere. Ah, right here. So 
So I actually do include some of the historic speeches, which took a lot of time to write. I, I didn't want to write them. I, I hate writing historic speeches. I don't know why. I just feel like they're so grueling to sit there and write. Um, but I did do them. Obviously, I changed the wording quite a bit to fit the book's narrative more than the historic narrative. Just simply because that's... It's historic fiction. You know, you've got a lot of wiggle room. And I think a historic fictional book series was needed for Mithridates because his life is so difficult to piece together that it's almost impossible to do without a historic fiction. So that's the first one. It takes place, like I said, during his birth date. And then, um his rise to power, I guess you could say, then his um, eventual takeover of the Black Sea, and then the, at the end it talks about the speeches. And at the end of the book, it actually has... I guess I can read it to you. <laughs> so. The morale of the Pontic army was high. Mithridates watched as the son Arcathius led the scouting force out towards the Amnias River. The war was about to begin. So I kind of always have these uh, cliffhangers of situations going on. Okay, so now we, that was the first book. Um, now we have the second one, which I already showed you the cover. I'll just show you it again. Um, so this one is actually like almost the complete opposite of the first one, I guess you could say. Um, during the entire book, it's just constant warfare. Like that's basically the book. Um, is the first Mithridatic War, and then, and the second, and then it, um, ends with the third one starting, and I think I included the speech. Uh... No, that's right. Okay, so I didn't include the speech to the third book. I did, however... I gotta find it. Ah, uh, come on, where is it here? Okay, right here. So I did actually include a fairly big portion um, of the speech, um, Mithridates' famous speech. Um, in Pergamon. Now, obviously, I didn't include all of it. His speech is flipping long. I don't know how that dude talked for that long, but he did, and <laughs> hey, it was pretty good. Most of it was propaganda, but it was a pretty good speech. Um, you can find the entire thing, actually, in Justin's Epitome, um, which is based off, I think it was Trogus's Histories or something like that. Um, so yeah, he kept, kept the entire speech. Well, what we think is the entire speech. Obviously, some of it could have been changed and stuff, so I didn't include all of it. Just a pretty good portion, because again, I hate, like, uh, <laughs> writing speeches and uh, stuff like that. So, that's the second one. So again, the second one takes place around 89 BC and ends in 73 BC. So, that's that. And then the third one... It's actually kind of sad, honestly, and this is what I went for. I purposefully made this last one sad. I, I got the the re reader attached to Mithridates as a character, and then I finished it off how I wanted to, and that was hopefully getting the reader to cry, because... <laughs> yeah, you uh, heard what I said. So basically, um... Um, basically... This one starts with the uh, advance into Bithynia at 73 BC. Um, and the way I did it, uh, where the heck is it? I included his speech, I gotta find it though. Yeah, okay, so I did include his speech literally in chapter one. Um, I include his speech uh, that he gives right before he marches into Paphlagonia. Then I uh, do the Siege of Cyzicus, or Cyzicus, however you want to pronounce it. 
Um, and then after that, I actually include, I think, the Siege of Sinope. Um, yeah, the Siege of Sinope. The Siege of Amasaya, which wasn't actually a thing. I made it up because I wanted to include the Amasaya Siege. I included the Siege of Themyscira, uh, and Amisus. So Amisus was where the uh, most famous of all these is Amisus and Sinope, at least the most well-known one, ones. And um, at Amisus, the famous Callimachus um, used counter siege en engines to um, hamper Lucullus. He eventually did break in. I think he attacked during a storm or something, or while well, Callimachus was uh, letting his men rest, something like that. Then um, he did Sinope. And Mises actually burned the city. No, that, yeah, actually, that wasn't it. Um, Callimachus didn't want to let, have the Romans take it over, and he realized he was eventually going to lose, so he burned the entire city, and Lucullus cried during it while the soldiers looted the entire place, which is actually kind of funny. Um, And, and then the next famous one is Sinope, where it was actually funny. A eunuch named Bachides, who killed Mithridates' harem so they could avoid being captured, fought by the side of Seleucus the pirate, who almost at one point gave the city up to the Romans. He was going to betray Mithridates. But in the end, um, Bachides and uh, Seleucus just took all the loot, burned what they could of the city, and left. 8,000 Sinopians died, but the city was saved. Amasai was fake. I made it up again. Um, there was no historic siege of the place, but I thought it would be cool to include one. Again, this is just historic fiction. You can basically do whatever you want to do. Um, and then I did the siege of, siege of Themyscira, which is my favorite of all. Like, throughout the entire war, this is my favorite siege. And the reason for that is because the Amazonian women defending the settlement... Um, when the Romans dug tunnels to undermine the walls, they countermined, and these tunnels were like huge, these weren't normal tunnels. And so while the fighting was going on, the Themyscreans threw beehives at the Romans, and then they unleashed animals at them. And for some reason, that just, it's comical because it sounds so stupid that it would actually work. And it did work. Uh, obviously later the settlement did fall, but for a while the Romans were literally beaten by animals. So... Then, obviously, it takes the historic path of Lucullus attacking um, Mithridates, forcing him all the way to Armenia. Then we have Tigran. I actually included... Where is it? So I actually included what is said to have been the real words said by Tigran when Apius demanded the surrender of Mithridates in Tigran's court, and that was, the whole world in my own conscience would condemn me if I was to surrender the father of my wife to his enemy. If the Romans attack, then I will defend myself. You are dismissed. So um, I declared, well, I think, obviously... Obviously, it's um, sort of broken up when you're using Armenian sources and more biased Roman ones. But um, that is what was thought to have been said. So then uh, it follows the route where basically Mithridates um, goes back into um, Pontus, takes back his kingdom, fights Pompey. And you'll notice some things when um, I'm trying to look for him, by the way, at the same time. It's, fat, it's way past here. Yeah, so, um, one of the funny thing is, funny things is, is what I did in this, these book series is I specifically put certain characters in the first one so they would be seen in the third one. And so I have some of, like, leaders of barbarian tribes that are ready to make their last stand with Mithridates who end up dying. Um, and also to make, I'm not trying to spoil too much of this, by the way, but, uh, 
but obviously I want to talk about it. So, um, um, in the end, in the end, everyone dies, <laughs> literally. Uh, I'm trying to find it. So, I think chapter 11 is the last chapter. Yeah. Chapter 11 is the last chapter, and so, um, I made it sad, I guess you could say. Um. I included Mithridates' final real words historically. I'm not gonna say them. I'm not gonna spoil anymore. So, uh... That's about it. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk about them a little bit because I think a historical fiction, fictional historical, however you would say that, you know what I'm trying to say, about Mithridates is definitely, was definitely needed. And so I was kind of tired of waiting and I basically thought to myself that if I wait any longer, either someone's going to make one and absolutely ruin it, or I'm going to get really lucky and someone's going to make a really good one. And so I decided to just, you know, say, screw it, I'm not waiting anymore, I'm gonna make my own. <laughs> I think they turned out pretty well, obviously they're kind of small, pretty easy reads, honestly. They're not anything, like, difficult. Although I wouldn't really put a historic fictional, historical fiction book difficult at all, in my opinion. Um, they're pretty easy reads, at least the ones I have read have been easy. That is, unless you buy, like, the 500-page ones, which <laughs> I don't think I have the patience to write a 500-page book. But, yeah, um, that's basically all, guys. I just wanted to talk about these for a little bit and, um, I guess let it be known that I am a writer. <laughs> I've been writing for a while now. I really enjoy it. It's, like, one of my favorite things to do. I always look forward to it. I'm currently writing another book right now, and I actually just finished another historical one. So, as you can tell, I am... <laughs> I write quite a bit. Um, I enjoy it. It's easily one of my favorite things to do, so... That is all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.